Well, Secretary of State Pompeo is going to come for a whole week in the region just days after Defense Secretary Mattis left his position. So the, the Trump administration continues to change and Mattis was one of the people that the region really knows well and trusts. And so I do think part of it is Secretary Pompeo coming and explaining that we're still on track, you can trust us. Of course, it also comes after President Trump's surprise announcement that they're going to withdraw from Syria um, without much explanation, and then claiming that Turkey can be the one that battles um, ISIS, and then goes on to say that ISIS has been defeated. And then you have a new envoy that's supposed to battle ISIS. And so there's a lot of confusion. Confusion in strategy, confusion in personnel, who speaks for the president. At the same time, you have John Bolton visiting the region. He was in Israel yesterday, national security advisor. And so there's lack of clarity. And I think one of the reasons that Secretary Pompeo is going to every single capital that is key for uh, the US and that is the GCC, all GCC countries and Jordan and Egypt is to say, this is what our position is. Everyone's waiting to hear that message because we're not clear what the American position is, especially when it comes to Syria. Absolutely, and it's going to be interesting, isn't it, considering the fact that the Trump administration, the president himself, continues uh, to change and evolve his positions you know, daily on Twitter. It's difficult to get a handle on that, certainly even for his closest advisors and staff. But I think the question is, though, who benefits from that lack of clarity, particularly when it comes to the regional politics? Well, who fills the vacuum? So in part, of course, Russia. Russia has proven itself as a steady ally, someone who puts out a position and sticks with it, as of course we've seen its support for Syrian President Bashar al-Assad, and comes out as a winner, but also somebody that's clear-headed. You have Putin's position um, quite clear. Turkey is benefiting, especially because, as um, Nancy was just saying, there is the Turkish position on the Kurdish fighters inside of Syria, so now they almost have a carte blanche. We've just heard statements from John Bolton yesterday saying that, no, actually, you know, we, we have to make sure that we're working with the SDF fighters to um, battle it out with ISIS, but in reality, Turkey feels much more emboldened. And Iran is wait and see mode. Um, Iran, of course, feels the pressure of America's rhetoric, however, on the ground. They're very much present in Syria, present in Iraq. They want to make as much trouble as they can in Yemen. So those are probably the most obvious uh, winners, let's say, if the U.S. is disengaged and pulling back. Why does this leave the Gulf Arab countries, particularly Saudi Arabia and right here inside the UAE? Because there are a lot of questions, aren't there, about that U.S.-Saudi relationship. That's a, that's a top-down relationship, let's yeah. be honest, and certainly so much pushback on Capitol Hill post the murder of Jamal Khashoggi, but at the same time, it doesn't seem to be affecting policy, at least not yet. Well, I think for Saudi Arabia and the U.S., it, they are strategic interests that have gone back decades. And that doesn't change. Yes, again, you'll have certain moves in Congress, which were surprising. I mean, that, that, that they got so much consensus in uh, Washington when there's very little consensus on anything else. Yeah. Um, that having said that, like more you said... More potentially anti-Trump than yeah, anti Saudi. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. It, absolutely more anti-Trump. And so... But White House, Saudi Arabia remains very close, and the interests, which are still important, oil, uh, defeating terrorism, uh, continued search for stability of some sort in the region, and of course, pushback against Iran. And that is the main theme of Secretary Pompeo's trip here, is that we are serious about our wanting to push back against Iran. Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.